Hi everyone, thank you for joining today's session. Today we're going to, to speak about OpenShift multi-cluster management with Red Hat Advanced Cluster Management for Kubernetes. My name is Andres Valero. I work at Red Hat as an OpenShift Specialist Solution Architect. And today with me is Mario Vázquez. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Mario, as Andres said, and I work at Red Hat as a Senior Solutions Engineer. So for today, we have a short but intense agenda. So first of all, we will, we will introduce the main challenges we find when we try to manage multi-cluster environments in a hybrid cloud landscape. We will introduce Red Hat Advanced Cluster Management for Kubernetes or ACM from now on. Then we will explain you how ACM and GitOps work together. And last but not least, we will deliver a demo where we will see the main features of the product. So as I was telling you, uh, managing clusters, Kubernetes clusters in a hybrid cloud environment or multi-cloud environment is something hard. So these kind of landscapes are error to prone. Definitely the configuration and security management for these clusters is something that can be really overwhelming. Deploying applications, manage the updates in these different clusters across different clouds, different platforms is a really challenging task. And also find the managed resource in such environments is time consuming and sometimes can be really, really complicated to debug when something is going wrong in one of our clusters. So for help us in all these challenges, in all these problems and more, we have Red Hat Advanced Cluster Management for Kubernetes. For ACM, we have uh, four big areas or what, as we say, four big pillars that we work to help you or to help customers with the multi-cluster management. First of all, there is the multi-cluster lifecycle management. So to be able <clears throat> to manage the lifecycle of different clusters from ACM, we can manage not only OpenShift, but other public Kubernetes services like AKS, EKS, GKE, etc. But just for OpenShift, we can have a full lifecycle. So we can create and destroy OpenShift clusters also. We can also help you to enforce the configuration management in the, in the different clusters and to make them secure using policies. It can also help you with the application management. So we are able to deploy applications. We are able to manage the updates to make sure that the right application lands in the right cluster. <clears throat> And also we can help you with the, with the high availability of applications. And you'll see that later on in the, in the demonstration. But uh, in these two areas, in policy and application management, GitOps is something really important and is something that later on Mario will introduce to you. And last, multi-cluster observability for health on optimization, but not only for this. With all the tools that ACM provides you, you can not only uh, have uh, information, but you can also debug, you can manage resources, Kubernetes resources across all your, your clusters. In, <clears throat> in NCM, we have this, this main, this is the main dashboard where we can just really quick see and have a general idea of what's happening in our clusters. We can see which platforms, which clusters, kind of Kubernetes, state of the pods, if our clusters are or not compliant, etc. So in we can quickly know what is happening in our federated domain. Then with the policies, we have a powerful tool that will help us to centrally uh, manage and enforce security and, and configuration to different clusters. We are compliant with CIS and other security standards, and we have also now integration with Open Policy Agent. In the application lifecycle management, 
we can, as I already introduced you, we can deploy application from different and multiple sources. We can deploy at scale, manage the upgrades, manage where is happening, what, where are deploy, being deployed applications. And now we have also integration with Ansible when we are deploying applications. So for instance, we can have a pre-task and a post-task. So if we are deploying an application, we can do something like, for instance, opening a ticket in ServiceNow, then deploying an application and last configure a load balancer to access to our application. That's something that now we can do in a single step on, on ACM. And now I will hand it over to Mario. Thank you, Andres. Uh, so we are going to see how GitOps uh, comes to play with ACM. So let's do it. So what's GitOps? A uh, brief introduction. So GitOps is a way of deploying applications or configurations to your uh, Kubernetes clusters using Git as your main source of truth. That means that every object that you want to get created, modified, or deleted on your clusters uh, will be stored in a Git repository. And that way, you will have a record of who, what, and when a change was done uh, in your environments. And also, it will allow you to, it will allow your teams to do code reviews before doing a change or have different levels of approvals, um, mainly take full control of all the changes that uh, are done on your data centers. And then of course, we can use the git commit his history to restore the, the environment to a previous state. Okay, but um, how GitOps work in ACM? So we have three main objects the channel object, the subscription object, and the placement rule. So what is what? The first one is the channel object. The channel object uh, defines a source of information. In this case, if you look at the left screen of the, at the left side of the screen, you will see a Git repository, which is of type GitHub, meaning that uh, it's connected to a Git repository running uh, stored in GitHub, which has the, in this case, the files required to deploy our application, a deployment, a service, whatever we need. Then we have the placement rule. The placement rule is where, where we want to deploy those objects. So in this case, in the right side of the screen, we have a placement rule, which has three uh, main configurations. Let's just start by the cluster conditions. So the cluster conditions is a way um, that you can use for only um, getting the clusters that are currently available, which means that are up and running and there are no issues on those clusters. Then we have the cluster selector, which as you can see, have a label uh, matcher. In this case, says environment equals dev. And last, we have the cluster replicas, which in this case equals to one. What this means is that from all the clusters that are available in our infrastructure, we are going to get only those which has uh, the environment dev label. And then from that list, we only want to get one cluster. That means that if we have five clusters in the dev environment, we will get one of, the, one of them for, our, for deploying our application. And then we have the subscription, which is like the glue between the channel and the placement rule. So in this case, we are saying, okay, we want to deploy this channel and we can use then annotations to filter which objects do we want to deploy on the on the cluster. In this case, if we look at the annotations, we can see that we have a git path, which says app lifecycle etherpad, and then a git branch, which says main. So this way we can um, actually filter what, uh, what objects within the repository we are going to deploy. So for those of you who are already Doing GitOps, you know that you can um, order. Uh, well, you can have your repository, your repositories organized in different branches, or, or maybe using different folders. So with these two annotations, you can play with that. And then in the specification, we have the channel, which says we want to deploy the Etherpad app latest channel, which is the one pointing to the GitHub repo, and we want to deploy this channel on the placement rule uh, called Etherpad. PR, which is the one that matches the dev cluster. 
right? So we will see how it works in detail in the demo. And we have been talking about a Git type channel, but we support also Helm repositories and object storage, meaning that you can uh, deploy your Helm charts or even if you have all your deployment files in an S3 like storage, you can use that as well. And of course, we, su we support um, almost any Git server out there GitHub, GitLab, Gox, etc. Okay, and now uh, we are ready to start with the demo. I will hand it over to Andres, who is going to introduce us to the ACM web UI. Hi again. Now let's go to see the product. Let's go to see what ACM can do. So this is the home screen of the product. And as you can see, there are four big areas. So the four pillars I've spoke to you a few minutes ago. We have the class life cycle, visibility, application life cycle, and the governance risk and compliance. So let's move on to the cluster life cycle. So in here, we have a list of all the managed clusters. And as you can see here, we have a cluster here in Amazon, another one that is running on bare metal. And we have the local cluster that is also running on Amazon. Okay, so we are managing also the cluster where ACM is running. From here, if we are managing OpenShift clusters, we can upgrade the clusters. Okay, and we can also create and import existing clusters. So between the clusters we created and the cluster we import, there are few differences. For instance, if we go inside this Amazon cluster, we created this one using ACM. So we can here see that we have the credentials accessible. We can download from here the Kif config and the install config files. And also from here, we see all the options or all the options we have to manage this cluster. So edit labels, connect to the cluster, upgrade the cluster, search Kubernetes objects inside that cluster, detach the cluster, that means stop managing the cluster. And we have an option that is destroy the clusters. So as we created these clusters using ACM, we can also destroy this cluster using ACM. However, if we go to the bare metal cluster, we can detach the cluster, but we cannot destroy the cluster since we didn't create this one. We just imported it. When we want to import a cluster, we go here, we provide a name like, I don't know, Andres. We apply a label that usually is the cloud or we can just leave ICM do it. And then we click on generate command and it will generate a YAML file encoding base64 that we have to run in a command, a kubectl command against the cluster we want to manage. And that will create all the resources we need to be able to manage that, that cluster. But we can also create from here a new cluster. So for instance, we can say, okay, Google Cloud one. And we can select the Google platform and just providing some few information here in this, in this formulary, we can, uh, we can deploy a cluster using Hive and the EP installer. And we can also click here, enable the YAML, and we can see here all the YAMLs that is going to consume Hive and the EP installer to do the installation. And as you can see here, we can deploy clusters in Amazon, in Google, in Azure, in Visphere, and in bare metal. So we got a lot of options from, from ACM to deploy OpenShift clusters. There's something I forgot to show you is inside the clusters, we can get some extra information like the nodes, but this is an important thing. These are the add-ons so the agents we deploy in the managed clusters to uh, perform all the operations. So in here, we can see in the different clusters, the state of those agents. So if sometime there is something that is not working as expected, we may have a problem here. So in here, we can check. Now let's move on to the main dashboard. 
And as I already told you, we have here the main dashboard. We can see in a very easy way the platforms or the clouds we're using, the amount of clusters, what's happening in those clusters, pods running, etc. We can see also if the clusters are compliant or not. And we can also filter this, uh, this dashboard in here using these labels or using the labels that we assign to those clusters. And we can filter and let's say see only the dev clusters or we can see just the bare metal clusters, whatever we need to, to see here. So this is pretty, pretty useful. We have here this little Grafana icon. So if we click here, obviously we go to a Grafana dashboard and in here we get metrics and information of the managed clusters. For getting this information, we get a, a Thanos, Thanos instance with an S3 storage and we can configure the persistent we need for this, for this data. And we are using PromQL to get all this information and you can build your own PromQL queries in order to extract different information if you need it. So not only field information, also metrics from the clusters, and last but not least, we have here the search engine. This is very, 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 very powerful. And here you can see there are some pre-booked filters. And these are filters that I created myself. So for instance, this is a filter that looks for deployments created in the last hour. No deployments created in the last hour. But there are some stuff created in the last hour. That's perfect. Now let's go in to repeat a search going to search for deployments in the cluster Amazon Managed One. And immediately we get here all the deployments in this cluster. And we can click on one of those. We we'll see the YAML definition and we can edit whatever object from here. And this is equivalent an OC edit command. But we can also, for instance, click and delete or by clicking here, and pasting some YAML code and selecting which clusters we want to create something, we can create new objects in our managed clusters. And in here, you are seeing a lot of small squares here. These are the objects that are all the objects related with all these deployments. So when we use the search engine, we don't just get what we are looking for, but all the related objects. This is important because this can make our life easier when we are debugging something. But not only, we don't only have this, these tools, we have also the Visual Web Terminal. This is uh, like a CLI on asteroids. This is something I like a lot. From here, we can, for instance, say, okay, OC get pods in the open cluster management namespace and we obviously we're going to get the pods in there but we get this um, improved output when we can see different pods the state we have some information but we can also interact with them for instance we can click this pod and we will get here a summary with some information basic information about the pod we can see the events in the last hour, if any. We can see the logs of the pod. We can connect to the terminal in the pod, and this is pretty cool. And we can also see the YAML definition. And this by itself is, is pretty, pretty powerful. And this is working not just with OC, but with OC, with kubectl, with Helm, and Istio CTL. But from here, we can also use the search engine, like we did few minutes ago. So we can again look for a deployment in one of our clusters, let's say in the bare metal one. We can click here and we get all the deployments again, or even we can click and see the resources, but in a different way, but just from a single place. So from here, we can perform connect commands, we can connect to the clusters, we can get information, we can search for the sources. So this is this is pretty powerful. And now I will hand it over to Mario 
that will, will show you some cool stuff about the application. So Mario, it's all yours. Okay, thank you Andres. So we are here in the ACM applications. So what we are going to do is we are going to create a new application. And in order to do that, we can use the web UI. So let's give it a name. In this case, it's the Etherpad application. Um, then let's use this namespace here, Etherpad. And now we are using Git to get our application deployed. We already have this repository configured, so we are using it. Then we have a special branch, which is called DevConf. And what we are going to do now is we are going to um, configure the path for this application. So in this case, inside the repository, we are using the branch DevConf. And inside that branch, uh, we are using the folder app lifecycle etherpad AWS to deploy our uh, application. So as, as Andres as Andre said before, we could set up pre and post deployment task with Ansible. And then we can choose which clusters do we want to deploy the application to. So in this case, we want to target any cluster which has a label cloud equal to Amazon. Uh, we can add multiple labels and or we can deploy to all online clusters and the local cluster, or we can just deploy to a local cluster. Local cluster meaning where ACM is running. Then we have deployment windows where we can choose when this application can be uh, deployed. For example, we can block specific intervals or allow it specific intervals. For this time, we are using an always active, which means that the application will be uh, created right, right away. And then we have the YAML file here on the right side. So we can use the web UI to create our applications. And then, of course, we could uh, take this YAML file here and upload it to our Git repository. Although that's not the way GitOps work, but for this demo, we are showing it this way. Okay, so we created the application. And now we will see how the different um, how the different objects start coming up. Okay, so here we have the application deployed. Um, as you can see, in the in the placement, we said that we want any cluster with the cloud Amazon um, label, and we can see here that the application is being deployed to two clusters, to the one AWS managed one and to the local cluster. Okay, so we have our application deployed on both clusters. We can see that the deployment is still not ready, so let's wait a bit and now it becomes ready. Uh, so what we are going to do now is we're going to access our application. We can click in the route. By the way, this all, these are all the objects that are being created by our application. And now uh, we can you, you know, you can navigate the different objects and you can get different information for the objects. You can uh, build the YAML definition and so on and so forth. But we are, um, we don't have much time, so let's go as, uh, to the application. So I can open this um, application here in my browser and you can see that it's working and the same goes for, for this one. Okay. But now let's say that I have a bare metal cluster and I want this application to be deployed to that cluster as well. So um, I need to edit this application. So let's do that. I'm going to edit this application and I'm going to add a new repository. In this case, uh, it will be the same repository that we are already using, same branch, but um, my bare metal cluster uses different um, files. So in this case, the files are under bare metal uh, folder, right? And then I already have a placement rule for this um, cluster, which is this one that will target any cluster which its cloud label is equal to bare metal, right? So this is the change that we are doing. And now the application should be updated. So if I go back, um, I should see that now the application is deployed on two clusters, right? We have, well, on three clusters, we have the other two clusters that were deployed before. And now we, I have a new one, which is called PM Manage One. And here I can see that the different objects are being created as well. So I have the route, the service, everything's the same. Uh, we just need to wait a bit for the deployment. 
and now the deployment is ready. So let's access this application. Okay, so we have the application ready, right? So that goes for the multi-class, well, mul you can see how you can deploy your applications to multiple clusters. And now we are going to show a, a very simple disaster recovery scenario. So in order to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this application first. Okay, remove everything related to the application. So I don't want to keep that, right? So now uh, we can start from scratch. All right, so let's click on create application and let's give it a name. In this case, the name will be Etherpad PR, right? And now, sorry, DR. And now we are using the same namespace as we did before. We are using Git again, same repository. Um, in this case, the branch is the same and the path will be DR, right? So now um, what we want to do is we want to use an existing placement rule. In this case, it's the one which is called DR. And we will see how that um, uh, placement rule looks uh, right after this gets created. So now we created the, uh, the application. The application will be deployed. And let's check the, the placement rule. So in this case, the placement rule, it's a bit different. If we look at the YAML, um, we are using uh, the manage condition true available. So the manage cluster condition available true, which means that the cluster is up and running and everything is it's running well. And then we have the cluster selector, which has two expressions. In this case, we want any cluster which its cloud label is set to Amazon or bare metal. And then we want we don't want to get any cluster uh, that its name is local hyphen cluster and from that list we only want we only want one cluster replica that means that we will get one cluster on amazon or one cluster on barometer let's see what we got so if we go back to the application view here um we have we are running on aws right so let's uh, refresh to get the latest state. Now we, everything is ready. So now we can access our application on AWS. Okay. Now, in order to simulate that the AWS cluster goes down, what we are going to do is um, we are going to edit the placement rule and we are going to remove the Amazon selector. That will make that the cluster uh, Amazon the Amazon cluster will not be reported but back by the placement rule, which means that the that ACM needs to relocate that application somewhere else. In this case, it will be the barometer cluster. So let's click edit. And now uh, I can click save. And as soon as I do that, if I go back to the subscription, sorry, to the application view, and I hit refresh, I will see how now the application has been moved from AWS to the barometer cluster. And at this very moment, uh, it's being deployed there. So let's wait a couple seconds until the application is deployed and we will try to access the application. So let's wait for the deployment to become ready. Okay, the deployment is ready now. So let's access the application. And you can see that the application is working. So this is for the demo. Uh, I just want to clarify that when you are uh, running on a real environment, all the changes to the application should be done in Git. And in this case, uh, ACM reacts to changes on the Git repository, meaning that if we now edit the deployment object on the Git repository, ACM will uh, detect that and deploy the required changes to the required clusters. And with that being said, I'm going to hand it over back to Andres, who is going to show us how to work with policies. As I explained to you before, from, from ACM, we can use policies, but not only policies, from here, from the UI or the policies book with the tool, we can also 
use policies, fully customized policies from uh, a Git repo using GitOps. But for now, for this demo, we are going to use one of the policies inside the product. So we create here in create policy and we are going to, to create a limit range using a policy. So we need a namespace. You remember anything we manage and everything we control from ACM, it's a Kubernetes object, has a YAML definition, so we need a namespace. And in here, we can select a limit range. This is basically doing or creating just a simple limit range for pods. Now we can select the cluster binding. So we are going to deploy as Mario already introduced to you. That is here a placement rule that we created based on what we select here. In here, we can see the standards, security standards compliant and the categories and control that the policy will be compliant with. So we have also this little check here that says enforce if supported. So if we click here, there is a field inside the spec that is called remediation action that moves or changes to enforce. We are going to unselect. We are going to create the policy in inform mode. And in a few seconds, you'll see which is the difference. So now we're going to create this policy and we click here, we see our policy just have been created. Now it is updating. We don't have yet the status. It is now recollecting the information. Now we can see that two of our clusters are not compliant. So the limit range, mem limit range, does not exist in this concrete uh, cluster, neither in this other one, but it exists in this cluster. So in here in the status, we can get the detailed information about what's happening. And also we can track here the history and the changes of the different steps or components of a policy. So let's move back to the policies list and now we are changing the policy. As we can see here, the policy is in inform mode. That's okay. We will change it to enforce. In the meanwhile, I'm going to show you the main dashboard and we'll see that in here, it's a start telling us that we have two clusters non-compliant and one that is, is compliant. So let's move back to the govern area and now we will see some changes. There are as already a, a cluster that has changed. In the managed clusters, we deploy controllers, Kubernetes controllers, and these Kubernetes controllers work in the expected way. So I have a definition, something that I define in the desired state, and it they control also the actual state. And if the states don't match, the controller will make it match. So now our controller, what has done is to create this limit range in the clusters that it didn't exist. And now if we go again to the main dashboard, we'll see that our clusters are now compliant. 